I have just about finished with Black Butte. In fact, I think that I have worked through all of the images that I had saved from that trip. Great hike, two miles up, two miles back. So let's go over to the photo folder. It looks like Pacific City is what's up next. I was over at Cape Kowanda last week, Thursday. Heavy rain, almost nobody there. Got a chance to head out on the beach. That sand was soft. I'm focused here on the foreground. I've got the beach. It's um, it's a little bit torn up from water coming down from the parking lot there. I really want to make sure that I've got a strong reflection, even though it's not a full reflection. There in that little strip of water sitting on top of the sand. And then, of course, if I could get some detail on the front of the rock, which is in pretty deep shadow. Not a lot of interest in the sky. It's just a soft ambient light background. And I'm going to look through the E filters. These are film style filters. Let's see what E stands for. Essence. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. But these tend to have gold undertones. And the higher up the scale I go on the e-filters, um, the more fade, with um, odd-numbered filters being warmer and even-numbered filters generally being colder. Um, that's true up at the top of the scale, too, is, is super warm. That E3 has some nice green, shows growth there on the rock. And going to check the F filters. Too much fade, even though it's light on the fade. That H filter is nice. A little bit too cold there. And then we've got these minimalist filters, the J's. But it looks again like the shadow on the rock is too deep in the J filters for me to get any real sense of light on that side. K is good, but the saturation souped up just a little bit too much for this image. N1, N2, N3 tend to be higher exposure than the other filters. That pink sky doesn't look too bad close up, but it's going to be obvious if you are looking at the smaller square on Instagram. And then everybody comments, nice edit, when you really just want them to appreciate the photo. These S filters are nice and light, but colors skew a bit farther from center than what I'm comfortable with. We're going to go back to the ease. I think that was a good thought when I started out there. And I want the rock to look good, but I also want to get a sense of the grayness of that particular day. I'm going to choose E1. I do not use that particular filter very often. And I think this rock is pretty close on. Just playing with the rotation. I think that's just about perfect. It still feels like it tilts a little bit to the left. Let's play with the exposure. Yeah, we'll lighten that up a little bit and maybe cool it down at the same time. Oh, maybe not cool it down. That was just a little too... Nope, yep, that's going to work find myself going back and forth. Little changes can accomplish a lot more in the final product as change builds upon change. Okay, I like the effect of the fade on the sand and the water. I don't like the effect on the rock. So, you know, if I go over and lighten the shadow, I might be able to get away with more fade. really like the softness of that fade, but this is one of those images where 
every little change is affecting in kind of a, a coarse way three or four elements. And that's the trick with mobile editing is that um, you just don't have the same kind of control that you might have in Photoshop or Lightroom on a PC. And so everything that you do has kind of global implications for the photo. <clears throat> it's part of the fun. Like, where do I find a balance that's going to be right for this image? Nothing's going to be perfect. Everything that I want to do is working up against tensions of other problems within the photo. And this just isn't technically a perfect image, and so I'm doing what I can with it. See what I can do with color here. And then once I've picked the color, I'll scale it back completely in order to give me a sense. And so this sky is actually uh, got a natural blue tint to it. And because I'm applying this cream slash beige, I am um, definitely changing the temperature of the photo. And I'm also fighting now. I'm trying to cover over that blue with a with a cream rather than accentuating the existing blue. And so I cooled down the photo by lowering the, both the temperature and the saturation, but now I'm changing uh, the highlights to balance it just a little bit better without affecting the coloring on the rock. And now we'll go over and, and see what we want to do with the shadow, which will affect the color of that rock. So that, that blue is going to bring out the green, surprisingly where when I use a, a green tint, all that does is make the rock look like it's all mushy. That purple is kind of a nice effect too. Let's go back and look at the blue now. and decide which one feels right. I'm going to stick with that blue at four. And we're done with this image. It's not a perfect image. It's not going to win any awards. But it's done. Transferring it over to the gallery. And of course, this is the longest part of the entire process. It feels like worked through all those steps, trying to get the color right, trying to get the sense right. Can't really see the rain in the image, but it's a cold Oregon, almost winter kind of a scene. And I think that that coloring is, is at least emotionally true, even if it's not literally true to how my camera viewed the rock it feels a little bit closer to my own experience of the place. Of course it was wet, and you don't necessarily see that in the sand. That sand is completely saturated with the stream water underneath it, and so I was stepping right through. Going back over to VSCO, uh, I'm gonna open the image here, click on Picasa tool in order to upload it to my VSCO folder. That's going to give me um, access to it from my computer so I can caption it, crop it, schedule it on Instagram, and there we go.